and welcome back to Who Would Win. And today's Who Would Win comes to us from 12345 Minecraft Lord. And uh, as I kind of said in the description, get ready for a long one. I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible, but get ready for a long haul one. Because you asked the question, who would win in a fight? The Gote 13, or, you know, the Soul Society from Bleach, versus Organization 13 from Kingdom Hearts. Now, be Ooh, yeah, there we go. Now, because I never played Kingdom Hearts, I had to look into every one of the members of the uh, of Organization 13, which means I now have every one of their information up in front of me on different tabs here. So we're going to have to go over all of these guys. The Gote 13, I can do in my sleep. That That's not difficult at all for me to get their abilities down. But one th few things we have to go over real quick, right up front. With Organization 13, we are looking at the... They're called 13 for a reason. We're looking at the 13 individuals. There is a 14th unofficial member, but we will not be looking at that individual. And before anyone says, well, that person would have made all the difference. Trust me, when we're looking at the power scaling of these individuals, it really would not. Uh, and even if it did, I would also give an extra member, uh, extra like a uh, fighter for the uh, Gote 13 to even it out. So like I'd throw Ichigo in there or something like that. Uh, but another important thing is we have to look at who, which version of the Gote 13 are we looking at? Or are we looking at the version from Turn Back to Pendulum, 100 years prior to the series? We're looking at the Soul Society version that had common Tozen, Gein, and Eisen in it. Are we looking at the um, Thousand Year Blood War arc version, which is after the Soul Society, or sorry, after the Eisen arc, or after you know after Eisen going in to fight the Quincy? Or are we looking at the Ten Year Time Skip uh, after the end of the series? For me, the best way to go about it is to go with the version that A, makes the most sense in terms of who would be there and why, and B, whose overall abilities we know the most about. Uh, so I would say we go with the, I say at least in this version, if you want to uh, suggest a different version at some point, we can do that. Uh, we're going to go with the Thousand Year Blood War uh, version. So that's going to include individuals like, um, that's going to include individuals like Rose, uh, Kensei, Shinji, we know all their uh, we know all their abilities at this point, so we know that the only individual, frankly, who we don't know all the abilities for would be Ukitake. That's just we don't know all, we don't know his Bonkai. My guess is he never used it, be, and I'm just going off base here just to understand why, we're not, why we won't be using his Bonkai because I'm not going to make something up. Um, you want if you want to see what I think his Bonkai could be, check out my video on that. Um, and, Wow, wow. Um, is I think his bonkai is something that put too much strain on his body, and given his illness, he just he, it was it didn't make sense for him to use it. Uh, also, that, to be and be clear, we will use the full potential of the characters because later in the war arc, a lot of characters get some upgrades. Uh, like Kenpachi, obviously, gets the Shikai and Bankai. Byakuya gets a lot stronger. We see Toshiro's full capabilities. We will use that because I'm either going to get someone who says, "Oh, you nerfed them," or "Oh, you, they didn't get that to later." Either way, I'm going to get someone who can play it. So I'm just going to use them at full capacity that we see. Last but not least, we should note that we will only be using the captains of the 13 Court Guard Squad because I'm going to be flat out honest with you if we decided to use the captains and the lieutenants and their third, and everyone else who was involved in the 13 Court Guard Squad because each squad commands hundreds, if not thousands of different Soul Reapers, then we would have to... Th then they're going to be overwhelmed. Like, the 13 on a couple thousand... Not a fair fight, no matter how powerful they are. Unless you're literally able to affect reality like that and snap Thanos people out of existence. Not a fair fight. So let's break this down real quick. Let's go as quick as we can. There are 13 members. Now, the members are what are known as, if I'm not mistaken, nobodies. Uh, it, or, or, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, no, but yeah. Uh, are nobodies. Now, nobodies are, are in essence... The uh, are equivalent to Bleach, surprisingly, hollows. They are individuals who don't have hearts. They lack emotion. Now, some do have personalities that imply they do have some level of, um, uh, of emotions. But most of the time, they're cruel, uncalled, uncaring, ruthless, or are prone to things like anger, things along those lines. But they are they're individuals similar to, basically, they're, they're kind of like a Ron car, I see. Human form hollows. Uh, there are 13 of them. They are, their leader is known as uh, Zemas. And uh, he is the de facto leader. He is the strongest among them. It should be noted that the ranks do not 
denominate strength except from the rank one. Because uh, the second ranked one, uh, Zig Zibar, Zigbar, uh, X I G B R G B R, uh, Zig Zigbar is um, is not considered necessarily the second strongest member of the um, <clears throat> of the organization. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the second strongest member of the organization is. From what I was find, uh, well, I'll find it when I'm going through it. Anyway, let's break it down real quick. Now, I'm not going to be. Well, I, you know what? Honestly, I can just give me one second here. We can't just go. I, I was about to say we can't just go. With the, I was about to say I can't really show you the image. I'm like I have it up screen. I can do that. So, Rox Roxas is uh, the 13th ranked member, and he's actually uh, was born from Sora. Is uh, the nobody of Sora? Uh, he is the youngest one, and he has control surprisingly over like the Keyblade and Samurais apparently. Uh, and he wields light. He using his direct rays and striking opponents with great power. Going through his abilities real quick. And by the way, you, you can't, anyone who says, you don't know this. is like, you're right, I don't. That's why I went to the site. Um, I've got, you can literally see me reading the abilities verbatim. So I don't want to hear anyone getting on my case for this. Um, anyway, there we go. His abilities. Um, so being Sora, you know, no, Sora's nobody, he holds, off half, holds half of Sora's power within him. Uh, since Rox, uh, Roxas is a complete being, uh, complete being's uh, heart is made up of two Keyblade wielders' hearts. What I have no idea. Oh, he can dual wield Keyblades. That's what he can do. Uh, Clicky showcases skills. Swordsmanship. He's skilled swordsman. Basically, in battle, he also uses light with great specialization. Become a phenomenally, uh, phenomenally dangerous foe. While initially using it, this uh, same fine style as Sora, over time he acquires his full power. He becomes more aggressive, more offensive. Uh, very strong, careful. He defeated Sax before accessing his full power. And Sax, when we get to him, is actually a pretty powerful dude uh, as well. Um, he has shown a great endurance and durability, able to re regain full consciousness moments be after being uh, initially knocked out. He can uh, glide at fast speeds, so fast, in fact, he leads behind a lens flare. Control 13 sword-shaped shields of light energy, which can uh, con uh, connect and form a laser array. He can levitate his keyblades. Key Special attacks involving him floating in the air and shooting 13 light beam uh, shields, which then light it up. Then, yeah, light it up with a thick twilight mist as he begins shooting blue spheres of energy as a point where the energy gathered from his hands. He often attacks rapid, uh, attacks rapidly from side to side, confusing his opponents. Uh, I, I'm going over the basic stuff here. Obviously, there's more to it here. Um, uh, he has balanced stabilized stats, 358 uh, and a half days. He also shown to be, I don't know what that means, frankly. He's shown to be considerably talented in magic, just as Sora will become proficient in just as a single lesson, and after just a single lesson, they're able to weaken, even dispatch Heartless with the element that they are weak against. Uh, and other, he gains, thing, there are things called limit breaks. Um... But those are like temporary boosts that I don't know if they'd really play a factor here. So, yeah, and his weapons obviously are Keyblades. Now, they all have their own unique weapons, too. Some are 2 to 13 God Squad. They all have their unique swords. So, that is Roxas. Apparently, a very powerful character, all things considered, being, you know, the a uh, part of Sora, uh, the Nobody of Sora. Uh, number 12 is Larek, uh, Larzene? Larzena? Larzena, I'm going to say, or Larzane. Or, I uh, actually might have been Larzane. Uh, she's the only female member of the organization, the 12th ranked one. She commands ninja nobodies. Uh, her, she also controls lightning. She uses to thrash opponents around in rapid attacks, also attacking them with weapons electrified thro with uh, throwing knives, meaning her weapon of choice, I'm guessing, is throwing knives. Uh, yes, basically, uh, her signature knives looks kind of like a weird fan. Uh, despite her stochastic energy, she's still a powerful member of the organization. She has proven to be an incredibly strong hand to hand fighter. As in both times she talked to Sora, I'd be a granted both times she did not ha she did have the advantage of Sora being confused or angry uh, in the last fight. She basically was able to kind of beat him. She easily pressured him uh, without even using her claws and disarmed him of his keyblade with a single kick. And the second time she does, she injures him enough to the point where he can barely stand. Uh, her physical fighting skills are never that of a ninja, throwing knives or a specialty. Uh, she is a powerful user of thunder magic, calling down lightning strikes, lightning bolts. Or a single bolt of lightning upon the battlefield can empower her knives of increased light, basically increased lightning ability. Channel, kind of like Naruto, channeling your chakra for your weapon. Uh, their powers uh, to increase their powers and throw along, also having them fire beams of lightning as well as perform levitation and local teleportation. 
her slights and special abilities all involved her using these abilities. Uh, Bell, in the second one, final book, she battled an absent silhouette in as data uh, as oh as an absent silhouette and as data. But uh, this time she uses the complete different tactics. But as data, we're not going to use that because that makes no sense. So she's honestly she's a Yoroichi type character a little bit. Lightning and ninja moves. Uh, then you get into the eleventh guy. This guy's interesting. His abilities apparently are flower based, which is very odd. He controls flowers. Uses his control to command beams of destructive energy. Uh, this guy's name, by the way, is Marluxia or Marluxia. Uh, I hope I got that right because Z's or excuse me, yeah, I say X's for some reason have a Z sound. Uh, he commands the Reaper Nobodies, and he wields a pretty cool looking scythe. I'm going to be honest. Um, so his abilities again. Uh, ah, where are they? Where? Where's there? Oh, nope, down this way. Uh, nope. And there we go. Uh, fights using the attribute of flower wields a large rose pink and dark green scythe. The powers command. He commands have the appearance of cherry blossoms in the Game Boy Advance release of the. They have changed resemble rose petals. Okay. He has two forms. Uh, his basic nobody form, and he can attack with the scythe. Obviously, scythe dance. Despite his arrogant nature, he's proven to be the most powerful member of uh, Organization 13, with his skills and power being enough to fight Axel to a stalemate, or one of the most powerful, I should say. With his command of flowers, he can create a clone made of petals, flower clone jutsu, uh, send a few flurry of blossoms at his opponent in Kingdom Hearts, uh, uses a slight, which he creates a powerful shockwave by hitting the ground with his scythe. Like most members, he can levitate. In the remake, he can actually teleport freely. In his final form, he can use his mech suit like nobody to slash Sora with scythe arms or charge him and cause massive damage upon impact. And he can summon three petals to fire pink rays and fire energy blasts from the bottom of the contraption. Uh, additionally, he has also gained the ability to uh, bring him to combat into a larger version of the Phantom Mech. Basically, he's got like a mech for some reason, okay? From his stationary position, he can fight mainly by commanding the Nobody and create shockwaves, shooting Reaper lasers, gusts of wind that prevent Sora from doing stuff. Great. Uh, in returns, often in the second one, he returns in an optimal battle with new tactics. Uh, the battle begins by him whispering Sora's ear, which causes a countdown timer to appear. Uh, okay, interesting. The timer reaches zero. He loses. You lose the battle, but the timer can be increased by using the reaction command, in which he grabs the scythe. Knocks him around the air and hurls him. Uh, okay. There's a manga version of this entire series, too. Uh, point being, flowers and his scythe and apparently a mech. That seems to be... And now, I know I'm simplifying it, but that does seem to be his big thing. And he gets a cool... But he's got a cool scythe. So, well, I'll slide. Oh, God. I've still got ten more to go. Let's see if I can speed through this. Like I said, it's going to be a long one, folks. Uh, yeah, we're already at the 13-minute mark. Looks... Looks ord. He actually he commands time, and his uh, weapon of choice apparently is pl the cards, playing cards, like or like tarot cards of some kind. Uh, he's known as yeah, he's got cards. Uh, interesting. Um, his attribute is time, but apparently he uses it in an unorthodox message when compared to other members. One might not even see his element as time at first glance. He's overall not the most powerful or hardest to defeat, but he's the trickiest member to defeat. He shortens the odds originally by dispatching Sora's companions. Before attacking Sword himself. In Kingdom Hearts 2, he does not have a health bar during the battle. Um, he and Sora have, each have a time bar that depletes over time and when they are damaged. The first to have their have theirs deplete loses the battle. That means that the player must watch Sora's HP and time gauge to make sure that neither are emptied when fighting. But that doesn't explain how he uses time. He can also conjure an orb of dark energy around him, which unleashes tendrils to reach everywhere. Also having a variation of where he surrounds himself with an orb of energy before con uh, conjuring his cars around his enemies from all directions. Uh, he's shown the ability to teleport he, um, into the field, bringing Sora's attack to him. The doesn't really say how he actually uses time, though. It, it, it's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, that's him, uh, more or less. Again, I mean, there's like these limit breaks, things along those lines, but again, they're not gonna really be. Uh, um, it's, uh, I mean, like he, his limit break apparently is called Jack, but summons a giant card or summons a card from it. Summon the card of Arctonites being a cross and a flashing symbol appearing on Rox's pennant. Selecting the cross results in the card merely exploding and looks like individually flinch. While selecting the symbol will create a few powerful explosion blasts to follow a trail between Luxar and the Tark. Okay, so yeah, I mean, most of these limit breaks don't sound like they're going to do much. So that's Luxardo. 
uh, or Luxord, uh, Demix is um, is uh, the ninth member. He controls water. His weapon of choice, if I remember correctly, is a shield, isn't it? Uh, no, it's a weird guitar. Um, yeah, it, it, he he's uh, very open about his dislike of fighting and prefers music instead. So he has a guitar. Uh, he's portrayed as being weak and cowardly. Bruce would be no pushover when a battle. Most of the players have trouble defeating him due to his ability to summon water clones and a time limit to defeat all of them. So he can summon water clones. Being a musician, his music is to control water around it and summon water forms, objects, shapes out of water. So, so he manipulates water. That's pretty much it. Unless you can pull the water out of somebody's body, I don't think it's really going to matter in this fight. Axel wields fire. That one was pretty obvious. And he controls assassins. Not that it matters in this case. Uh, his weapons are... Um, I know the name of it. They're chakrams? Uh, yeah, uh, one second here. Yeah, the chakrams, yes. Uh, and Bellas and the, you know, manipulate fire a little bit better. But anyway, he basically can summon and create fire, manipulate pl flame pillars, uh, fire blast, you name it. He can pretty much do it to some degree. It's just the matter of what level his fire gets to. Uh, Sax. Now, Sax is a pretty powerful guy. Uh, like, look at that sword. That's a pretty beast sword. He is the, his, he controls, um, Berser commands over Berserker Nobodies, and he can, his um, abilities are derived from the power of the moon, which is actually very interesting. Um, and as you can probably see in the corner, oh no, yep, you can see there's a little uh, ad for what he, uh, for him in the actual game. Uh, so anyway, yeah, Sax spinning his stash as, uh, he's the second in command, so he's one of the most powerful members, meaning he's probably second in terms of power overall, even though Roxas did beat him once. His power is shown to be able to survive a fight with Roxas and remain conscious while Axel, who had defeated Zion with some sort of uh, some of Roxas' power, was left unconscious. Uh, he appears to be calm and collected with, uh, without though throughout when he speaks in battle, but in battle he becomes wild and dangerous. Uh, basically, he's a savage wielding a claymore, because uh, he has he's extremely powerful in terms of that able to you know break stone. He's actually also extremely fast. Uh, God, okay, so where do we get to the, uh, the moon stuff here? Uh, he's able to unleash blue energy. I know there's a, oh, he, uh, when, however, his true form, it, it, however, his true danger is ability to draw power from the moon to enter berserk form. Upon entering the form, shape shifts, or his ship, his claymore shifts shape and produces a white aura and serves as an extra blade in 352 seconds. I don't, again, I don't know what that means. His attack can inflict silence whatever that means, while well, his aura is able to push back close enemies. He himself grows bestial, his eyes glow. Uh, he's capable of throwing Slamus Kimor into the ground, producing giant shockwaves, unleashing blue energy. However, he can, uh, Sora can pick uh, up any of the Claymores that he releases. Obviously, he can release more than one Claymore when he's doing that. Uh, when knocked out of his berserk state, he will spend most of his time with his arms stretched out to the moon, absorbing its power. Uh, the Nobody's under his command are berserkers. Great. Um... So, yeah, he's one of the strongest members of the organization. We have Zexion. This guy is weird. Uh, apparently, he weaves illusions to fight, unlike other organization members. His weapon uh, was originally unknown, and his talents were used only outside the normal combat. As it stands, though, he creates illusions. He creates illusions. His weapon is actually in this book um, right here. Uh, and he basically... He... Uh, Oh, the only Irish command spell used on Zexon after de depleting the fake HP freeze from the hallucinations. Um, he can copy attacks and throw them back at people. He has access to an electric card, which can reload his cards, or whatever that means. The, dar the card is distinguished by the wings of the blades, so forth, so on. Uh, he's an option of us. Fire style is totally different. However, in the odds, his absence silhouette only attacks... Okay, that's about data and stuff like that. Um... So yeah, he's basically can call, he's an illusionist. So it is, but he can also um, you know mimic attacks, copy them, so forth. So I mean, he's he's interesting to be sure. Uh, he can also change his parents if he needs to. Not that there's really any need for it, unless he's trying to play mind games on someone. Uh, then you have oh god, these names, Alexios, Alexios. Who's got this pretty cool looking axe sword, which is pretty nice. He controls Earth and manipulates Earth. He's pretty much the big powerhouse of what this guy is. Uh, 
except to be physically strong, able to like basically uh, he he has, supernaturally he can strike the floor with such force that it, it tilts and sometimes even makes the rocks fly up on the ground. He can summon earth and throw it at some individual. Um, he's he's just a, basically that's what he is. He is his strength is strength. That's what it is. Uh, rank four is uh, Vexen who commands ice and is very good at controlling ice. Um, and yeah, so he has, his weapon is, fights a large blue shield. He can use it for full front of, uh, full frontal attacks as well, fending off attacks and use it offensively by, you know, firing the shield basically. Uh, he controls ice, causing the ground to be slippery. Summons icicles to rise and ground target, hit targets within several seconds. Uh, so but yeah, he's an ice manipulator. Then you have Zal Zydel, who this guy literally summons like I think it's like eight lances, no six lances. He can manipulate, move, use three and manipulate the other ones because they're conjured from wind and he manipulates wind. That's what this guy does. Uh, and he manipulates it pretty effectively. Zig Zigbar <laughs> sounds sounds like a weird food. Zigbar is interesting. He's the second ranked, uh, and he actually manipulates space. Now, what his weapon of choice is is a type of sniper. Uh, sniper weapon. It's a, it's a blade that does fire things. So sharpshooter is kind of his weapon. Uh, and top of each gun bears a pattern similar to nobody. Similar. So yeah, it's a it's a gun blade that fires. What he does with his uh, spatial abilities though is that he basically will just teleport, basically cause portals to open, and basically uh, without ever actually having to aim is what he can do. So that's how he uses space. Last but not least. And this is the big one, is the leader, which is Zim, Zemnus. And he is uh, the nobody of Zenahar, and he is, um, the, his ability is to manipulate nothingness. And challenge his weapons, red blades of energy, called ethereal blades. Nothing, uh, see, the whole concept of nothingness is very, you know, profound. Uh, now, unlike, he is by far the strongest one of the group. Like, it is flat out said, there's a reason he's the leader. Uh, his weapons are ethereal blades. Now, these are beings of red energy extended directly from his palms of his hands without any help and can be summoned or dispersed at will. They're able to change their length as well. They are solved despite their appearance and despite seeming lacking cutting edge are wielded like swords and can be used to, like, as projectiles and suspend themselves in midair around another target. As de desperation moves, he can surround his enemy in darkness and fire an amazing amount of ethereal blades. He basically has no limit to them. His powers, oh boy, uh, whew include, uh, this is just saying how powerful he is compared to the other members. Uh, what? There we go. As the most powerful and most member, in addition to having his abil ability to uh, fly and teleport, wields the power of nothingness. He uses this to form his personal weapons by solidifying beams of nothingness into blades of energy and calling ethereal blades to act at well. Um, so we already went over that. He's very skilled in close hand, to co hand in combat. He can also fire <laughs> them as laser projectiles, either from his hands directly or suspending in midair. Uh, he can make as many as he wants and create thousands of them if he wants. Uh, he has a limit break known as all uh, vanity consists of break called all vanity consists of him summoning a barrier around himself that is impenetrable and can be and can damage the enemy enemy that it touches. Uh, it retains the barrier, but it can all in his final limit. He can create two large powerful energy blasts from his hands. The fire from long range can heavily damage an enemy. His control over nothingness allows him to turn even other organization members into dusk or destroy them if he wants to. Uh, his limit cut replicant uses a barrier formation. Anyway, uh, he also has natural power over darkness in addition to basic abilities. So the few members can able to employ darkness in combat, able to encase Sora in a dark sphere of energy. Uh, he appears to have ability to create pop dimensions at will that he can control as women, as shown uh, by how he warps himself and Sora while leaving the rest of his enemies in the castle uh, into a realm of nothingness, where only the memory of skyscrapers stands. And later on, when he summons a small alternate dimension to ensnare and torture Axel by firing lasers all around him. While merged with Kingdom Hearts, he seems to be... We're not going to do that, though. Uh, while facing Sora and the rest of his uh, armor, he wields a large sword capable of dealing great damage. And this is... Uh, they don't have a picture of the actual sword he wielded, apparently. Uh, but still... Very large sword he does wield, uh, and in the his battle, in all his battles, he displays outstanding agility and athletic prowess. He's both excellent swordsmanship and martial arts skill, capable of unleashing relentless barrages of attacks 
from both his ethereal blades and even the unarmed, and even unarmed that are uh, hard to block. Either way, this guy is actually very powerful. Uh, 25 minutes in, jeez. So, how did I, how did I decide to, because here's the thing, there's clearly individuals who match up perfectly in terms of who they'd match up against. Like a Kampachi, for instance, is perfect against like a Saxon or a, um, oh God, where, okay, find him, find him, find him, find him, find him, uh, yeah, or a, um, Lixius, the, uh, the fifth and the, uh, seventh guy, respectively, or Swayphon is perfect against the twelfth, but that's here or there. You know, if they're all facing off against each other, and I, I, I want to kind of put it back like this. Put all, put the respective squads numbers against the respective number ranked uh, organization members. And then whoever basically is winning is then comes in and aids their comrade if they need to. So let's break this down then. So against Roxas, that means you'd have Ukitake against Roxas, or Roxas, or Roxas, Roxas, what's his name again? Yeah, Roxas. So against Roxas, how does uh, Ukitake fare up? Well, Ukitake's Zanpakuto Sogia no Kurotawari is actually a perfect counter to any sort of energy attack that Roxas throws at him. Because, and let's be clear, yeah, it's light, and I guess it's moving at light speed, hypothetically, but there, that being said, most of the Shinigami can move at relativistic light speed, at, if not past light speed. Uh, now, I know there's some contested um, arguments on that, sure, but it, uh, their flash step alone it, it, it is well beyond the speed of sound, because they literally just disappear in an instant and, re and appear in seconds in other locations. They can move so fast they create after images. They, it's clear that most of the Catholic class Shinigami have light speed reflexes and some level of speed in the same regard. Um, so, like, in terms of swordsmanship, they might be equal. Okitaki's older, so he's probably, because all the Shinigami are at least a couple hundred years old minimum. Uh, and we know Yamamoto is well over a thousand years old. So, these guys are going to be... And by the way, Yamamoto's alive in this. We're using Yamamoto in this case before he got killed. Um, so, yeah, Roxas is light. It's just going to be rebounded by Ukitaki. And Sogio no Kotaro... no Wari is also... Uh, it gets absorbed to the left and, I believe, released through the right, if I'm not mistaken. But it also, the speed also gets enhanced on its way out. So that means you're, he's already enhancing the speed much uh, far beyond that. So Roxas is quickly going to get hit by his own attacks. It's also, it probably looks like among the youngest members of the group. So Ukitaki is going to probably condescend to him a little bit. So Ukitaki is also a Keto Master, which means that's going to be a problem. The only thing that's going to hold Ukitaki back, honestly, is his health. Uh, if he starts to have a coughing fit, it's very easy for Roxas to take advantage of that. Uh, and then, as we saw with Wonder uh, with uh, Wonderlice, uh, just skewer him from behind. But no, I do think Utagi would beat Roxas. Uh, now against the squad drop, so against Mayuri Mayuri Kotsuchi versus Lar Larzena Larzin. Uh, that's essentially kind of like a. And I'm gonna be honest, I, that she's kind of a knockoff Yoruichi a little bit. No, that's not true. Your Yoruichi could have been a knockoff version of her. Let's be honest. Um. But the, I guess the question is, how do you think Mayuri would fare against Yoroichi? Mayuri is full of tricks. His Bankai creates poison. His Shikai paralyzes. And his Bankai also creates a giant caterpillar baby with blades that stick out. So take that for what it's worth. The question is, is Mayuri skilled enough as a fighter to avoid lightning strikes and um, to survive the close-range combat scenario uh, situation when it comes to Larzin? And... Mayuri is very tricky. He has a lot of tricks on call. I don't. He's not a fighter. That's the thing. He's really not a swordsman, and he's not a hand-to-hand -hand fighter. He fights with tr dirty, and he uses a lot of tricks. If if she's getting in close using speed, and that's the question: How fast is she compared to Mayuri? Mayuri's they all still have flash dip, except for Kempachi, who's just pure, just natural speed. Um, that one's tricky. I, I, I'll actually say this, as much as I, and I'm, I'm trying to be part, I'm really fair here, because I know, I know not, not all the Bleach characters are going to win. Uh, and Mayuri, despite the fact he would probably fare very well against, if he had time to study her ability, sure, he'd, he'd be able to beat her no problem. I have no doubt about that. But going into the fight unprepared? Ugh. I'll say this. He actually has the best shot against her when she's not using long range, because if she gets in close and he hits him, hits her with uh, Agisogi Jizo, which paralyzes you, um, upon cutting you, then she's screwed, quite frankly. 
But the question is, can he, will he be able to do that? I'll say this, because he's lazy, kind of, because he, when fighting against uh, another swordsman, fighting against zombie, he hits a Gaia, he put a device on his sword to basically move to his opponent's sword. So I'd imagine that he might do something similar to that. Worst case scenario, he just goes Bankai and poisons her. Um, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, and then maybe just sneaks up behind her and then stabs her. So I will say, I'll tentatively say he wins, but it's with difficulty. Uh, then you have... Uh, 11, which would be Marluxia, and that'd be against Kenpachi. Now, from everything I've seen from this, this guy doesn't really stand much of a chance against Kenpachi. Um, Kenpachi is pure raw power. He's not, he's very similar to a couple, again, he's actually similar in Saxon terms that he's like, kind of like a berserker style, though he, Kenpachi is very much aware of what he's doing, except in Bankai, which is surprising, uh, but interesting nonetheless. Kenpachi also literally emits God knows how much energy off is like his Ryatsu's spiritual energy is monstrous by even captain standards. Like the only person, people who may have, who probably had higher was Eisen. Eisen definitely has higher just because of the scenario he's in. And maybe, honestly, it's actually debatable whether, I'd honestly say it's debatable now whether or not Yamamoto had more than him. Uh, but I'd, let's say or Yamamoto. So right off the bat, he can easily just dispel any and that's the thing. A lot of techniques like just don't affect him, um, or he just gr uh, brushes them off. Uh, I mean, it's filler. But when you looked at um, his fight in the Bount arc against um, uh, Maki, he um, none of his attacks were working against Kempachi, and we've seen that again. Like uh, Tozen's attacks uh, didn't work against Kempachi. I mean, they they hit him, but they he just brushed it off. Uh, I just don't think this guy, he's going to play with Kimbachi a little bit, sure, because of the, the petal cl flower clones, things along those lines, but ultimately, I don't, he's just not going to be able to stack up against Kimbachi very well. <sighs> Luxord, the time, the time manipulator against Toshiro, again, the problem is, in the game, it's, they say on the game how time works with him, but it's really not specified how he actually manipulates time, from what I can see. And even if it is like some sort of, you know, pausing effect or fast forward, rewind, whatever, um, it's more that it doesn't really matter because Toshiro is frankly just uh, will probably be a bond because he's one of the quickest uh, captains going to Bankai most of the time. He's just he's probably going to uh, survive. He's probably going to basically just outlast whatever this guy's doing because he's not overly powerful. He's. Um, he's said to be the trickiest one to fight. Unfortunately, it's a guy has got a lot of abilities under his belt, so it shouldn't be that hard to fight him. So then you have Kensei Murumaga versus uh, Demix. This guy, uh, now Demix was the water uh, user, but he's also like described as being the most cowardly. Even creating water clones and manipulating water, I'll even give the Kensei a win here, because quite frankly, Kensei is... Um, can say, well, not the strongest captain. His Shikai alone gives him range to allow him to just blow up the water clouds and then just attack and just slice him up. If he gets in close with, a, with his Bankai, then this guy's screwed because he can't take that hit. And because his Bankai condenses all the explosions down into those small points, as long as he's within contact with someone, it's going to do damage. So, again, I'm going to give that one to Kensei. Uh, squad 8, that'd be Shunsui. Shunsui versus Axel. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Shinsui is very used to fighting, because he's fought before Yamamoto, who's, let's be honest, fire clearly outclasses Axel's here. Uh, and Ukitake's got far more versatility with his... Uh, Ukitake. Shinsui's got far more versatility with Koten, Katen Kyotsu manipulating children games and turning them into reality. So while the fire would be, you know, would still, could possibly kill him, sure. The fact that Mary's going to be playing enough games that it's not going to matter goes into uh, Ira uh, Oni, which is the color game. Basically, you, if for those of you who don't know what the game is, because each game has rules, and if you win, you live, you lose, you die. That's kind of the rule. Basically, it makes children's games an attack, and the winner is going to get the benefits, the loser is going to be hurt or killed. But Ira Oni, which was always one of my favorite ones, it's a color game. You name a color, and you try to strike that color on the opponent. Now, let's say, so if you name white, and you hit white, you will cut them and hurt them. But the damage they take is only proportional to the amount of white that you have on you. 
If you they have, if they're wearing nothing but white, but you have very little white, even if you say white, you're not going to do a lot of damage, despite the fact it's all over the place. But if they have a very small amount of white on them and you have a large amount of white on you, then and you hit that white, you might like if they're like wearing like a white bracelet and you hit that and you're wearing like a white sh uh, like a coat, you're gonna cut their wrist off. So it's a very unique attack, and attacks like that are very just. Yeah, I, this is not something that Axel would be very good against. So then you have Komamura versus Sax. And I'll be honest, Sax, this is where for one of the first ones where I actually think the King of Hearts guy, I think, probably wins. Not to say Komamura's win. Komamura's one of the guys who I always joke about the wharf effect. Yeah, he's one of the characters really strong, but loses the other characters to show how strong they are. Um, Komamura, sadly, a He's always used as kind of an ex as an example of how strong the villains are for good reason. That his attacks are really just pure force, and unfortunately, his Shikai alone I don't think would be enough to take on Sax, especially without pa the fact that Sax uh, is powers through a lot of damage uh, and can go into berserker uh, berserker mode. So Shikai, she Shikai to the, uh, this guy. They're going to probably be relatively even, but if he goes into Berserker form, firing up energy blasts, even having a shield around him, and, you know, Komamura was Bankai, he's probably, more likely, he's just going to avoid the giant sword of uh, Kakujo Tengen Myo, which is a giant. And because Komamura and the giant are connected, they, um, they, they experience the same thing. So if the giant's injured, Komamura gets injured, and likewise. Now you might be asking yourself, well, you're using giving Kenpachi his Shikai and his, uh, Bankai, why not give Komamura his, um, his human form. If I do that, then he's done. He's only going to get one fight, because that's what happened. He had one fight against Bambietta, that was it. So, no matter what, even if Komamura won, he's done. So, he can't go and aid anyone. So, I'm using Komamura as it is. And because of just the way that Sax, uh, Saxon is, or Sax is, I actually think he, I think he would beat Komamura in the fight. Uh, so then you got Byakia versus, uh, what's his name again? Zexon? Uh, Zexon. And he was the, he's the weird illusionary guy. And unfortunately, it's not the same as Eisen, where Eisen was literally manipulating your, like he could control your senses. This is more just copying an illusionary attacks. The problem here is that Byakuya is one of the most well-rounded captains there is. He's a master of flash step, a master swordsman. His Zanpakuto alone, while simplistic in what it actually does, is very versatile, with Zenbo and Zakura turning into a thousand cherry blossoms, and then his, his Shikai got compared to his Bankai, which meant he probably turned into more like a hundred thousand or maybe even a million. And then his Bankai, God knows how many cherry blossoms that is now. And then I may, in the different forms his Bankai takes with Senkai, the uh, the inconvenient case of swords. Uh, oh God, yeah, I can't remember the name of it. The, the raw, uh, raw white emperor one where he basically gets the wings. Uh, plus he's had to deal with Aizen before. So he's not a stranger to illusions. And if the illusions are weaker, um, then he shouldn't have that much of a problem. Add on to the fact that this guy isn't really a fighter, per se, in the sense of a close-range fighter. He can manip he can copy techniques, sure, and with the amount of Kido that Byakuya knows, he might copy some of that, but I do think Byakuya is just going to take the win and just, you know, honestly, flash step and boom, stab him. Then you get Shinji versus uh, Lex um, Le Alexis, the fifth, the organization fifth member, and yeah, that one I'm giving to Shinji, because Shinji's Sakenade, which inverts your entire perception of the world, senses, hearing, sight, smell, words, um, up is down, left is right, and let's be clear, if you see, like, the perfect example is, if you see Shinji coming at you from, uh, from in front, that means he's coming at you from behind, and if you try to block his slash from the left, it actually means it's coming from the right, so it's not an easy thing to get over to Aizen's Aizen, so he quickly figured it out. Um, but yeah, because this guy, uh, Lexus, is pretty much just a brute force fighter, he really would not be a good matchup against Shinji, and Shinji, I think, would take that. Now, the fight with Vex... Oh, God, what's this guy's name? Vexen. Vexen, who is the ice manipulator, versus Unahana. Now, here's the thing. Unahana, as I remember correctly, actually has like uh, had like an oath not to uh, draw her sword. Until she had to train Kenpachi, because Unahana's true reveal is that she was the first Kenpachi. She's one of the strongest captains in the Soul Society ever, period, pretty much. 
Uh, and she is a merciless fighter. Abs Plus, her Kaido is enough that she can literally be sliced across the chest. Kaido is Kido. Kido is basically their version of magic. But her Kaido is healing magic. Uh, Kido is enough that she gets immediately slashed against, uh, across the chest by Kimpachi and heals it up almost instantaneously. Now, the question is, would this guy push her to drawing her sword, or would she just stick to Kido? Frankly, she's probably she's a Kido master, so I would think she probably isn't pushed to the point where she has to draw her sword. Um, but, who's to say she isn't? Hmm. Uh, ultimately, though, she probably the amount of Kido she probably knows is more than enough that she could overwhelm him. Uh, then you have Rose, um, Rose, who's the Squad 3 captain, versus Zalind, or, uh, Zaldin, who is the wind manipulator. Now, Rose's Kinshara is a whip that manipulates sound slash music, uh, which would actually probably be a decent weapon to, uh, to keep, like, uh, lances that are manipulated by wind at bay. Uh, the actual keeping the wind itself at bay is going to be a little difficult, but once he goes into his Bankai, Kinshara Butadan, which basically creates a dancing troupe, which actually inflicts physical harm upon you based on hearing it, and you can't block it out unless you destroy your eardrums. Um, at that point, I don't think Zaldin would be able to, you know, counteract that, because I don't think he's aware of how to stop it. Uh, so, and he doesn't really have the ability to blow his eardrums out, unfortunately. So I do actually have to give the win to Rose there. Then you have Soyphone versus uh, Zig... Zig, oh, Zigbar? <laughs> What's his name again? Zigbar, who manipulates space. This one will be tough for Soyphon. I'll admit that. This one will be tough. Because she's going to have to basically avoid all the spatial distortions. Uh, fortunately, she's one of the fastest captains in the Soul Society. And she her mastery of Shunko is um, is quite, is very, uh, is very impressive. Shunko basically being a combination of Aikido and physical combat. In her case, it, like, wraps wind around her body. Uh, and then her Zanpakuto is a two-step kill. Susan Meibachi is a stinger on her finger. It's, it looks like I'm giving you the finger, but that's where it, com that's where it is. Two strikes, and you're, de you're literally dead. You're, like, a phase from existence. Uh, so, while he would be difficult, I do think she would win. Uh, so, that is, that, that's her. So, basically, as, a, as you're kind of get as you're kind of seeing here, I'm giving the majority ones to the 13 court guard squad. I am. But that's not to say I'm sticking my head in the sand and saying it would be easy for all of them. Um, but that being said, we have to get on to the big boy. And Saxon, by the way, even though he would survive, he would win against Komamura, someone like Kempachi would see him as a much more fun opponent, and Kempachi would wreck his day. <laughs> Nozarashi can break through him, can cut through a meteor that would have been an extinction level event, as well as cut through space itself. I'm sure it would cut through Sax. <laughs> Yamamoto versus Zemna, Zemnas. Now, Zemnas could probably, in theory, he could just trap Yamamoto in a pocket dimension. But here's the thing, the Shinigami can open their doorway to their dimension any way they want, time they want. So the question is, could is that just an easy way out of a pocket dimension for them? Honestly, yeah. I, I mean, I don't, there's nothing to say they can't do that. Uh, though, to be fair, they can't, like, open Gargantua's to Hueco Mundo, which is the world of the Hollows. Um, I mean, they can, but they, it's like, but they need help. Like, they can't just open the, a door to, um, where they need to go. And, um, from the Soul Society, they can't be like, okay, let's go to Hueco Mundo. Uh, no, they do, they do need help getting there, uh, which is interesting. Uh, but I would imagine, though, that if they want to go back to the Soul Society, I mean, can't they just... I guess they can't open the Senkai Mono either uh, from the... Two. So I guess, technically, he could just trap Yamamoto in an alternate dimension? But the... Uh, I don't know. I mean, in theory, he could just do that to all of them and call them Dave. But that's the thing. He doesn't. Like, if he sees someone as a threat, that's clearly not how the ability... Like, let me read this again for his pocket dimensions real quick. Pocket dimensions at will, he can control them at whim, as shown as how he warps himself and Sora while leaving the rest of his enemies in his castle to a realm of nothingness where only the memory of Skyscraper stands. And later, when he summons a small alternate dimension to his snare and torture Axel by firing lasers all around him. That seems to say, though, that he is able to t uh, create pocket dimensions and control them, sure, but 
it seems like he still needs to be a part of it in some way. So, yeah, take that for what it's worth. Which means he'd still be in the pocket dimension with Yamamoto. But, regardless, Ethereal Blades versus Ryujin Jaka, or just, it, would they, what, how does that stack up? The Ethereal Blades, I mean, they're energy blades, sure, but Yamamoto can just, you know, encase his sword in fire. So, you have that going down. Um, uh, energy Blast, sure, he can fire plenty of energy bats, but um, Yamamoto can pretty much dodge it without too much difficulty. Uh, Yamamoto, if Yamamoto really has to, he can go Bonkai, and therefore, and Zaka no Tachi, basically what that does is all the fire that Yamamoto has, it gets in, uh, cased in the sword, it is concentrated in the blade. It is concentrated either in the the edge or the tip. Anything that the edge cuts is just cuts. It's gone. Anything the blade, blade tip uh, hits is basically incinerated out of existence. Also, while he's in Bankai, he's wrapped in fire so hot that it's basically the same heat as the sun. You actually can't even get close enough to him without having some sort of actual protection. Otherwise, you will be incinerated. Incinerated. Also, he can summon the, uh, the the ash and flame corpses of everyone he has ever killed to battle on his behalf. And finally, he can just do a concentrated strike that basically it, it eliminates the existence of everything that that strike hits. Um. So yeah, Young Moto's pretty hacks in many ways. The question is that is Zemus uh, Zemus strong enough to beat him? Uh, honestly, if Yama, even without going Bankai, Yamato's also a master hand and comma because he's jacked. Master at uh, Keto. Uh, and all, all around good guy. Um, no, he's. Yeah, now, if we go with the whole limit break idea of all vanity, creating a barrier around him that's impenetrable, yes, it's an energy barrier, uh, barrier, but Yamamoto is also in the same boat when he's in Bankai. So let's assume that he does take Yamamoto to an alternate dimension to, you know, do the, uh, have the fight out, and he goes in the limit break. Yamamoto goes in the Bankai because he's in an alternate dimension. He, can't, he can, doesn't have to hold back. And ultimately, it's like, who's going to outlast who here? And the correct answer would probably be Yamamoto. He's had more experience using his Bankai. Granted, the longer he uses it, the more damage he'll probably do to himself as well as the uh, surrounding. But because he's in the alternate dimension, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the problem just here is that even like using darkness, Yamamoto's like, even if he tries to use darkness on Yamamoto, he's like, your darkness is powerful, but <laughs> there's no darkness that can escape the light. And night, I like to buy Ryujin Jaka. Yeah, so, yeah, you, Yamamoto would just blow it away. So ultimately, yeah, I, um, I, uh, unfortunately, as much as I didn't want it to be as one side as it, I, I, it kind of became, Yamamoto, uh, the 13 Court Guard Squad really kind of stomps Organization 13 in the long haul. Sorry about how long this video went. This is probably the longest one I've ever done. Uh, but thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. That's my thought. I think the Gote 13 pretty much owned the uh, the Organization 13. Although, again, it was a really interesting matchup. I, I would be willing to do the Organization 13 again. Now that they know them better now, I'm willing to do them again at some point now that I have a better understanding of them. Uh, but until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Again, sorry for the length. As always, if you want us to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review of it at some point. And the ideas for who would win, Star Wars, Superior Magic, what if, anything to do with the channel. Put that in the comments below as well. Because at some point. So thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.